I know you have a way or ways in which you can actually help real estate investors mm -hmm. uh, and private lenders. But before we get into that, let's start from ground zero here. My guess is I probably have hardly anybody that is uh, listening in to the show that even knows what the bank on yourself concept or the infinite banking concept is. So where did this come from? I mean, you, you know, it's been around for over 160 years, but what is this concept? Why did it originate and how does it work? And, and take your time, go nice and go nice and slow. Cause I want to make sure we understand what this is all about. Cause quite frankly, this is probably a brand new concept to a lot of people that we've got tuning in. Yeah, absolutely. So this concept really started about, I would say about 20 years ago by Nelson Nash and uh, Nelson Nash wrote the book, Becoming Your Own Banker. And he's kind of the godfather of the infinite banking concept. He invented the infinite banking concept. And in his book, Becoming Your Own Banker, he starts off talking about some of the problems he had. Like at one point he had about $500,000 in debt. And back when interest rates were like 20%, he was paying about $67,000 a year, just in interest payments alone on that outstanding loan. And he started to realize that, you know, a lot of other people have this problem. A lot of people, you know, the average American spends one third of their income on servicing debt. So, you know, this realized, you know, he, he realized that this is a common problem and then kind of went through the technical details of whole life insurance. And kind of for those who don't know, whole life insurance isn't just life insurance. It also has a cash value component to it, like a savings account portion to it that grows over time. And you actually earn compound interest on that money. And, and the point of it isn't just necessarily from an investment standpoint. Um, it's, it's more of a saving standpoint and a way for you for you to become your own source of financing. So Nelson Nash throughout the book is talking about structuring dividend paying high cash value, whole life insurance policies. So that way you could become your own source of financing and then you could pay the interest back to yourself. So originally it was created to address the interest part of the, the interest problem. Instead of paying out interest to other lenders, you would pay interest to yourself and become your own banker or you would bank on yourself. Now the actual asset dividend paying whole life insurance that's been around for over 160 years, families and financial institutions have been using, you know, dividend paying whole life insurance policies for over 160 years, you know, but really the, the concept, the infinite banking concept and, and it being used by more people than just banks and financial institutions and um, family offices, it's being used now by more, um, everyday people, people who make, you know, hundred thousand dollars a year to $200,000 a year, real estate investors who have like 10 properties, you know, who are on their way to becoming financially free, but not just for the billionaires, if that makes sense. That does make sense. So how does the concept work? Mm -hmm. So the concept, so the first step is you want to work with an advisor who understands this from a conceptual standpoint, standpoint, and not just a product standpoint. So using infinite banking is not just going out and buying a whole life insurance policy and that's it you've already checked all the boxes you you need to work with an advisor who understands the high cash value use of whole life insurance there's only a limited set of companies that could actually do these policies and a limited set of advisors who actually know how to structure and design these policies so that way you have high cash value in the first few years and you also have access to it there's also a lot of tax benefits when it's structured the right way so i guess step one is you want to you want to find that advisor that really knows this and does this full time and has a track record of actually working with clients and the second step too is you want to make sure that your advisor is going through your um, financial analysis making sure that that you are um, you're doing all these other things for the right reasons. So, for example, we do a financial analysis to understand the client's financial situation. Number one, to see where they're at, what they're doing. Are they investing in the stock market? Are they full time employees? Do they have their own business? We want to understand their financial life, their financial health. And then we also want to understand their objectives and what is it that they want to accomplish? Do they want to retire in the next 10 years, 20 years? Do they want to buy more real estate? Do they want to loan out their money as hard money lenders or private money lenders? What is it that they want to do with their money? So we want to identify those objectives and then we would structure or design maybe one policy, maybe more than one policy to address their objectives and also based off of their financial situation, based off of their tax rates, based off of all these other intricate parts that need to be into, taken into consideration um, from there. Yeah. It's an, and again, it's important. It's not a commodity. This isn't a product. It's a, it's a way of living. It's a way of kind of understanding how the financial system works and for you to become your own financial system, not literally starting an actual FDIC insured bank, but, uh, but having the banking principles in your life where anytime you need to finance something, you can go to yourself, go to your whole life insurance policy, leverage that, borrow against that, and then use it for other investments.
Thank you.